Beethoven's idea was that art is not the essential tool, but perhaps the tool in order to acquire what is higher in uh, ourself. I, I believe uh, still uh, in that Beethoven's music can help us to uh, make a better society. If, quote-unquote, art, um, Horia and Hartmut mentioned that art can help us to elevate us from being what yes. we also are um, uh, 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 through opening a kind of metaphysical dimension. Is that something you describe or not? I think art, we are talking about music and art, and which means that we're deeply committed to it. It's part of our lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, because it's part of our lives, uh, we want it to be part of other people's lives too. And people whose it is not part of their lives to such an extent at present. Consequently, as was said, the perception of art and its possible meanings and the uh, ambiguities of music, which George referred to so beautifully, all these things are a basis uh, for education. We want to offer people the best. They can't necessarily always accept it, nor but should the, they. But the best of what? The, the best of what can be done by the perpetual concern with what are, in fact, the great masterpieces um, of art, the classics. Um, is Adorno right when he states that Beethoven um, was replaced by Hitler because there no longer existed a profound experience of art? Because that is what he says. If they really would have this, I mean, Hartmut, it is something you just said yourself. If people really listen, this would not have happened. Who can I take the floor for? Margaret. But I, he can't be right, I don't think, because the people he talked about had those sort of upbringings. They listened to their parents playing, and they themselves had a profound appreciation of German culture, but they went, many of them, to work in Auschwitz and Dachau. I mean, to, to say that this lack, that there was a vacuum, I don't think there was. I mean, it seems to me Adorno is very wise and very often very right, but this one I can't agree with. And, and it seems to me one of the great historical puzzles of the 20th century, which we're still grappling with, is how could this immensely civilized country, this country where the arts were so valued, where every town had its own concert hall, where you had wonderful opera, where you had terrific science. I mean, this was a highly educated and civilized population. And it seems to me that, that the question which we're still grappling with is how could it, how could it have happened there? How could Nazism have taken over? But to say that it's an absence of culture seems to me just not to make sense. But I would argue that perhaps in his uh, example is wrong, but in a principle he's right because uh, you have this phrase of him, the lack of experience of this humanistic spirit. Mm. He instantiated it with this tradition of playing at home music, which is an excellent German tradition, now extinct. Uh, but it might be that his example is wrong, but could you deny, Margaret, that this lack of experience of the humanistic spirit is at the very root of the brutality of the Nazi regime, with Germany was esteemed to be the most cultivated car country in Europe, and uh, the, the 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 greatest barbary came out of uh, that. Why? Because something was missing, and Dorna put it: is this experience of the humanistic spirit, not only to be cultivated in order to have knowledge, or to be knowledgeable, or to have information but to have something in, 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 in addition, which was the soul, the soul of it. They sim simply substitute one authority by another, but the spirit of obedience doesn't change. First, we look to a genius, Beethoven, for leadership, as you seem to do, Rob. <laughs> 
<laughs> and uh, then all of a sudden we say, no, uh, uh, now we have better than that. We have Hitler, Wilder, whoever. And then after a bad experience, we come back to Beethoven. What Günter Grass is saying, this is the typical attitude of the lower middle class. They should decide for themselves and not look up to some authority, to some genius, to some titan artist, to some high art or ever, to tell them what to do, but they should take responsibility for themselves and don't hang anybody's picture on the wall and look up to it. So that, that idea that George Steiner was talking about earlier, of music being ambiguous, that the very root of it being ambiguous, um, I think is absolutely essential to our understanding of what happened in what we might call the most advanced, civilized culture musically that we've had in the world, and how it turned into barbarism, to suggest that the ideas in music are really not helpful but the emo I mean, the, it, we can think about the ideas all we like, but the idea that music hits emotion, and it hits it very hard, and it hits the nervous system in places that nothing else does, and it creates longings that themselves are ambiguous, and can reach in several ways, one towards good, towards the highest goal of mankind, towards being in the world in the most proper, and idealistic way, but it can also reach towards ideas of land, of belonging, of your group, of a place that was once yours, a place that must be yours again, the notes rising, and you suddenly feel, actually, where's my knife? Where's my bomb? Where's my gun? And where someone beside you is feeling, where's my love? Where's my love? Where's my love? And that the audience, two people can feel emotion with the same notes being played and the emotion will lead them in two completely separate directions and we have to take that as basic and as, as assured and as understood and to think that somehow or other if we only if the person beside us who's thinking about Bavaria or Ireland or Afghanistan just isn't listening right if only they could listen better like I listen then the world would be a better place or if the music could be played properly for them no, it seems to me basic in the ideas of emotion, and especially in the ideas of emotion surrounding nationalism, that um, music can hit that emotion that gives rise to nationalism um, in a way that very little else can, in a way that, in, in a way speeches can't, or legislation can't. And the, the song, the ballad, Beethoven's you know, work with Irish, Irish music, Beethoven's higher music, all of that can hit the person beside you in a way which can make them intolerant, intolerable and violent, and, and can make you the very best you can be. It's in the music, it's, it's basic, it's essential.